Calling all SCP Foundation staff, calling all SCP Foundation staff, this is Dr. Theron Sherman, anomalously broadcasting from Site-42. If you are tuning in for tonight's show, please make sure that you are logging in through your encrypted YouTube account. The Foundation provides those to you for a reason, Steve. So make sure that you are using your encrypted YouTube account to like, share, and subscribe. And if you really want to benefit the show, make sure to drop a line to the Patreon that's in the description. I think the chat can hear us. We are going live. I can see you guys. So we are going live in three, two, one. Hey there, Foundation staff. This is Dr. Theron Sherman, but you can call me Sherm. Welcome to another anomalous broadcast from Site 42. For anybody unfamiliar with our show, the rundown goes like this. Number one, I read you an SCP document or tale or something from the wiki. B, I open up the floor to the community to discuss what we've read. We're often visited by SCP authors and staff and fans, and if we're lucky, the author of the article themselves shows up to share some insight. Remember that if you'd like to join the conversation yourself, I will be monitoring the chat in between chapters and answering questions, as will my guest. Well, I gotta change that. Maybe not between chapters, but after and before is for definitely. Also remember that if you enjoy the show, leave a like and a comment to let us know, subscribe and hit the bell, and if you really want to help us out, become a patron at patreon.com site42. Quick plug, the Patreon today got a huge revamp. We now have rewards for every tier level. Before, it was just a generous donation and you got early access to the YouTube videos. But that is now the $1 donation level. And at 5, 10, so on and so forth, there are stacking prizes, gifts, things. They, rewards is the word we use. Isn't that Patreon right? So, there are things now, and if you would like those things, you can help the channel and receive things, which is better than not receiving things. In any case, enough of me, let's get to the show, which is still me, but wow, drink something, Sherman, wow. It's been a busy day, fam, but we're going live today. We are going through the tale, automated passive, automated, yeah, automated passive amnestization system Version 17.09. Automated passive and My teleprompter has it wrong because I'm a dummy. And it took my voice chat, it took my voice to text to say investigation rather than amnestization. So my teleprompter's wrong and I can't apparently read it right without looking at it. Automated passive amnestization system version 17.09. Got it. Nailed it. Had to close my eyes. But the good news is that the author, Nagiros, is here for us tonight, so let's bring them on. In three, two, one, video, audio. Hello, Nagi, introduce yourself. Hey. Hey, Sherm. <laughs> hey, hey, chat as well. Hey. <laughs> yep, so author name, Nagi Rose, but you go by Nagi. Pronouns are? Yeah, yeah, uh, prefer Nagi. Uh, pronouns are Viver. Viver, got it. Yep. So... We are reading the Automated Passive Amnestization System version 17.9 tale today. Do you have any pre-game for this story before we dive into it? Um, mostly just the fact that it's like one of the first, thing that was, first things that was written for the Deepwell canon, the Site-17 Deepwell catalog. Um, and that's, I don't know, it's not really an often discussed canon. Um, but this tale does a lot to sort of, um, build the, build the, the setting and the atmosphere and stuff like that. And we've, we, we've read stuff from Deepwell on this channel. Like you and I, we remember the, uh, the dead weight tale or the SCP actually that we read. Yeah. Um, the, the, the person with the deeper levels of stuff and it was really surreal and weird and somebody died, yeah. but somebody killed someone and it was a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a, that was part of a tale series and the, the, the Deepwell ca uh, catalog canon. So this tale was written, I, I want to say like 2019, Year of Our Lord Lucifer. Like I, I need to check on that actually. When was this posted? Yep, May 5th, uh, 2019. So it's been a while. Huh. Anyways, yep, jumping into, we can just say A-pass. I don't want to say the full, <laughs> full thing. We're calling it A-pass, people. We're calling it A-pass. I'm going to move my microphone, microphone into reading position. So pardon the noise for a moment because this- I got you tail has some good visual design and so we are going to pull that up in the browser for the beauty factor 
And so, yeah, we're, we're taking full advantage of the fact that we can um, actually show the article on screen now. Uh, we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to narrate everything for uh, people with audio only though. All right. So I believe you are kicking this off, correct? Oh yes. Yes. I believe I do. Um, we got a landing page right here. And as uh, I, I try to um, maintain like content warnings and stuff on some of my tales that are a little bit heavier. So this does deal with some discussion of like loss and institutional gaslighting. So just keep that in mind. Be aware for any four panel squares, everyone. <laughs> no. no, don't say that. <laughs> Anyways, yes, landing page. I said in chat that, or in Discord that I would make computer noises uh, to uh, vocalize the, the, the terminal, their old style terminal layout that we have here. So let's begin that. Beep boop. <laughs> terminal number 16. Welcome, site director, site director Weathers. Ventilation systems, Galileo.AIC, Indomitable.AIC, and electromagnetic agents are all online. Seism seismic activity, not applicable. Omega 9, stopped. Your current version of the automated passive amnestization system installed at Site 17 is up to date and all systems are operational. What now? Access APAS version 09. Turning it over to the Sherm. Beep boop. <laughs> system summary. APAS was developed in 2003 as a result of growing concerns over particularly aggressive memetic, cognitohazardous, and infohazardous entities. This was primarily due to the acquisition of SCP-579, at which point it became evident to security specialists that allowing anomalous perception-based and knowledge-based hazards to remain in containment without an efficient method of counteracting a breach was no longer a possibility. Project APAS involved the installation of a complex network of memory-affecting memetic agents, gaseous amnestics, and concentrated electromagnetic fields. The project underwent extensive testing, and after a successful prototype design was produced, now designated SCP-1346, the system was implemented exclusively at Site-17. The system uses amnestics administered through ventilation shafts, latent mimetic agents in various forms of media distributed to staff members, and electromagnetic fields constructed at set intervals throughout the facility. The fluctuating radio waves emitted from these electromagnetic fields are capable of subtly affecting the behavior of individuals who pass through them, and have been used to distract staff members from anomalous compulsion effects, completely obscure hazardous entities from view, and implant harmless memes for the purpose of resisting hostile variants in the wild. All of this allows for staff members to be perpetually resistant to memetic hazards contained on site, so long as they remain unaware of APAS's existence. Access Site-17 APAS Activation Log Yes, yes, all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, beep boop. Activation log. Amnestics. Accessing file. Please wait. Do not disconnect monitor. In some half-forgotten dream, I saw the earth tremble once and fall away as a giant tore through its outer crust, screaming from the dark while its cruel hands took hold of mountains adjacent to its steep valley and lifting itself into the air. In another dream, I sat next to a woman I loved and held her hand as she cried softly, my body shielding her from her co-workers' inquiring glances. I told her everything was all right, that we were safe. She asked me if I even knew what I was saying. She told me stories of entering Foundation facilities which had been ravaged by things which now feasted on the carcasses of gods. How whenever she passed over the body of another butchered researcher whose skin was boiling at room temperature, she told herself she'd seen worse and believed it. They called her task force the sanitation crew behind their backs. They picked up scraps of what Cutters left behind. If I had been awake, I would not have known her, but in my dreams, I held her close and told her that she was fine. She was a researcher, not a soldier, and had never done anything like what she was describing. They were dreams. They were just dreams. She smiled at that. I have a window in my room, she said, and each night I look up at the moon and the stars and think about a dream I had. A dream, I asked, since I'd been having nightmares as well. I'm alone and armed in a straight corridor with 13 exits at the end. 
Through the fractured metal of the ceiling above me, all I can hear is the screaming horror of a titan tearing through stone and ice. I held her softly as she cried a little more, and my hands found their way to her sh shoulders. She be I began to calm her, fingers drifting along her back, slipping under her hair and feeling a scar at the base of her neck. It resembled the needle mark of, rejected in of repeated injections of an amnestic. What's this? I asked aloud. She shuddered. In my dream, she replied with a pause, I took the right exit. I entered a room of glassy brimstone, and in the center was a beating heart of blackened ash and soot. The heart spoke to me. I murmured softly. What did it say? It showed me images of a titan of war and death, breaching the surface of the earth and lifting a great and terrible scream into the night sky, eyes turned towards the moon. And suddenly the sky was filled by avenging war birds, firing missile after missile at its colossal form until it slowly receded into the earth again. How could I reply? My tongue was trapped by the confines of my throat, working desperately to tell her the truth. I have had the same dream, I said. Every night now, I can hear the titan's voice as it tears to the ground and is driven back again and again. She was drifting away from me now. Her body was like a specter, escaping my embrace and slowly losing its color. I am glad, she whispered, and she was gone. Skylar. Her name was Skylar, and my name is Natalie. Noble Task Force Epsilon One has never existed. They never had a member named Skylar and Site-17 has never been destroyed. There was nothing in the empty stretch of land a mile from the compounds. There are no earthquakes which rock the site twice every month. There was no screaming either. If any of these things were true, I would remember. I would remember her. The air grows thick in my room again and the vents are whirring softly. They fill the room with odorless oblivion and coax me into my bed once again. In my half-buried dreams, I see her standing in the desert at peace. Alrighty, that's done with my part. Next up, emergency activation, mimetic dissemination process. Beepity boopity. Activation log, MDP. Accessing file. Please wait. Do not disconnect monitor. Do -do, 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 do do The memetic dissemination process and you. How to ensure proper subconscious inoculation among your site staff today. Dr. Weathers, your site has recently undergone a long period of maintenance, during which time the automated passive administration system was implemented site-wide. Congratulations! Your site is now 100% more secure, and contained, and protected. <laughs> but what is this system, and how does it protect your staff? This is the second document in a comprehensive user manual that has been sent to your site and made available only to those with level 4 security clearance. In this guide, we will walk you through one of the most complex and essential aspects of APAS, the Mimetic Dissemination Process, MDP for short. Section 1. What materials should carry latent memetic agents? The type of materials which will contain memetic agents vary. No meme is the same after all. In order for the memes to be most effective on the viewer, they ought to be lulled into a state of complacency with unimportant, repetitive, or unhelpful information. This makes media like office memos, instructional videos, and mundane reports ideal for memetic inoculation. Due to the tedious nature of overviewing content meant for subconscious inoculation, it will be generally annual... It will generally be analyzed by available D-Class. You will probably not be called on to view these materials as site director. Section 2. How are memetic agents hidden inside content? Excellent question! Memes have a humble beginning. Born from the silicon mind of an artificially intelligent conscript, packed away in your site's server room. The artificially intelligent conscript in involved in memetic production at Site17 is Galileo.AIC, with an output of five viable memes a minute. Your local AIC will take an in input document 
and downsize the produced memes to such minuscule dimensions that they can only be perceived subconsciously by the human mind. Once the documents are altered, they can be sent out to staff like any other notice. Section 3. What will the MDP protect my site from? In short, memetic and anti-memetic entities which seek to do harm to your staff members. Memetic entities are commonly contained on site, as their effects are demonstrable in test subjects and lend themselves to proper documentation. However, due to the properties of anti-memetic entities and objects, documentation is usually impossible. Unfortunately, the Foundation lacks a true anti-memetics division that could theoretically combat these threats. In fact, Site-17 may even harbor these entities or objects without your knowledge. But it's not all bad news. Here's an example of the MDP in action, and how it can be very beneficial to your site. Thanks to the general use artificially intelligent conscript indomitable.aic, this document has been secretly inoculating you. That's right, there are special memes hidden in this text, smaller than the eye can see. Here's a list of any memetic anomalies housed in Site 17, which would have been previously impossible to remember. Object DRO0045. Footnote. A documentation resistant object, DRO, is an esoteric term item classification uh, an esoteric item classification for complex animometic anomalies which cannot be stored in the standard SkipNet database. Summary of properties. Humanoid incorporeal entity wears a standard issue task force uniform, cannot interact with corporeal objects. DRO 0355 a mass of unidentified black leathery material occupying the entrance to the Biological Research Division. Remaining in its vicinity for more than 29 minutes results in several orifices manifesting on its surface. The orifices will vocalize to nearby individuals. Details of their comments are unknown. DRO 0678, a cognitohazardous document which became antimimetic at an unknown point. Testing on said document has been inconclusive, although it has been confirmed that test subjects cannot be observed after reading it. Oh, shit. DRO 0002. An antimimetic phenomenon wherein seismic activity of unknown origins will impact Site 17, usually ceasing before the site experiences critical structural damage. The event is not observable to individuals within the area impacted by the seismic activity. Uh, Sherman note real quick. Between the opening screens, seismic activity non applicable, the quakes in the last bit, and now this, I'm starting to get very worried. I see the foreshadowing. I'm very concerned. Okay, continuing on. Well, now that you know just what you need to be protecting your staff from, you can trust Galileo.aic to do the work for you. The memes produced by your AIC are designed to stimulate your staff members into being subconsciously aware of most antimimetic entities at all times. If a hazardous and invisible entity is making its way down the hall towards one of your staff, they'll feel that something is off and hopefully have the sense to leave as soon as they can. Son of a bitch, that's terrifying. Wait a minute. <laughs> Every time you've ever been in public and th got a bad feeling, it was actually something you should be running from. No, Nagi! No! Okay. Continuing on. Continuing on. But what about memetic entities? Good question, Director. Since memetic entities don't resist documentation and observation, current efforts by on-site AICs involve mitigating the oftentimes disastrous effects memetic objects can have on victims. Here's a helpful list of common memes your AIC will produce to fight memetic hazards. Designation, MCA23. Name, Right Senses. Effect, Protects against compulsive effects which induce tendencies towards homicide. MCD86. Caffeine Boost. Protects against memes which siphon energy from their hosts. MCS34. Firewall. Protects against memes which are attracted to information, memories, or emotions possessed by their hosts. MCV52. What Alamo? Discourages the investigation of disco or discovery of the NBP system. Section 4. What do I do if a staff member questions the MDP system? Detailed instructions on how to minimize the damage of an informational breach regarding APAS as a whole are hmm, regarding APAS as a whole is available in the attached document, The Ethics of APAS and You, for the good of your site. However, if one or more staff members discover the memetic agents within the distributed material, despite the implementation of the aforementioned MCV52 agent, there are certain options available to you as site director. 
Check out the attached document, Advanced MDP Application and Effective Cover Stories, for some helpful information if you find yourself in this unfortunate situation. Is it time for corrective electromagnetic devices? Yes, it is. I should mention, Sharon, before we, uh, if, you, if you could uh, maybe uh, demonstrate this on, uh, on, on the stream. Uh, some of the uh, the text on the screen is uh, darker than the rest of it. And if you mouse over that, you get a special message. Uh, Ooh, that are... All right. I'll go back to the previous screen. I'll scroll down to the bottom and find something. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's Ooh. um, it, it's it's a fair amount. I don't expect you to actually um go back and read the whole thing. But um, a little bit of a treat if you want to <laughs> examine that yourself. <laughs> Guys, there. Look at. Oh, wait. Can you? Can you? Yes. Okay. So you can see these. Oh, my God. All of these have them here do all of these have oh my gosh there's there's <laughs> hey guys there's easter eggs waiting for you i'm we're gonna leave these off since we started by leaving them off and it will be your yeah, excuse yeah, yeah. to go check out the article yourself corrective electromagnetic yes. something indeed beep boop here we go last page activation log electromagnets accessing file please wait do not disconnect monitor Greetings, Site Director Weathers. I am indomitable.aic, a general use artificially intelligent conscript used by Foundation Archival Director 059. How can I help you today? Access AMIC file name DRO001. Warning, the file you are attempting to access can only be retrieved by members of Overwatch Command and slash or a unanimous decision by the Ethics Committee Tribunal. Input clearance voucher. A clearance voucher? Hmm. I'll access 059's clearance log. Note that if no voucher exists, I'll have to deploy MTF Alpha 1 red right hand. Do you wish to continue? Continue. Understood. Give me a moment to access the external Ryzen network. Oh my, an 05 orientation. That certainly changes things. My apologies, overseer to be. Access file name DRO001. Accessing AMIC database. All right, Sherm, take it away. Let's do it. Item number DRO001, level six, cosmic top secret. Containment class, esoteric. Secondary class, ignosi. Disruption class, eki. Risk, risk class, critical. Special containment procedures. The area of land subject to DRO001's manifestation attempts has been declared AL908. Although the antimimetic properties of AL908 render it essentially self-containing, personnel stationed at Site-17 ought to be made aware that unauthorized entrance to AL908 will result in the trespasser being terminated upon recovery. Due to the substantial risk of discovery of DRO001 poses to Foundation personnel at Site-17, a site-wide system of behavioral control has been implemented to discourage the discovery of DRO001 or documentation of its anomalous properties. The system, labeled the Automated Passive Amnestization System, or APAS, has been summarized in primary document 0001.dro. What is APAS? During a given ESO physical manifestation event, Mobile Task Force Zeta-5, codename Lazarus Abominables, will engage with the entity until its eventual return to its subterranean origin point and subsequent demanifestation. If any staff members become aware of this engagement, or any structural damage inflicted upon Site-17, the automated passive amnestization system will enter Omega-9 operating procedures. Pictured here, Site of pi Primary DR0 DRO-0001 manifestations taken prior to AL-908 developing antimimetic properties. Uh, sure, sure, I should mention, if it helps you, you can just pronounce it as DRO, that's how I do it. I will go with DRO at this point, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that, I know. <laughs> it's something I do when I'm being picky about the uh, voice of the researcher for my readings. Like, if I do a mobile task force, I'll actually say something like, skip 2747. But as long as I'm doing a researcher, I'm usually more prissy about it. But yeah, that's, that's a lot of dro, so I'm switching scale today. Live stream, guys. Archived containment procedures. 001 dro beta? Is that a B? Beta? think so. I'll go with beta. Note, the following procedures have been archived and are no longer considered applicable or effective to the referenced anomaly. Asset profile, 001-DRO. Name, Dr. Tanya Schuyler. Age, 
27. Assigned object, DRO01. Priority status, extreme. Description, sole surviving member of Mobile Task Force Upsilon 1, codename Born from Flesh and Metal. Remaining team killed in initial exploration of Site-17 during Droz 1's first documented manifestation. Asset forcibly terminated the event by unknown means and was amnesticized upon recovery. Asset reassigned to Site-17 as junior researcher Dr. Tanya Schuyler. Non-essential records of Mobile Task Force Upsilon 1 expunged. Function. Asset 1 Dro possesses a partial resistance to Dro 1's antimimetic properties and has demonstrated the ability to forcibly initiate a demanifestation event. If Mobile Task Force Zeta 5 is incapable of subduing Dro 1, Asset 1 Dro's implanted class R, re remote repression amnestic, will be deactivated. Description. Dro 1 is a large scale antimimetic entity which continually attempts to manifest within baseline reality. Manifestation events thus far have always occurred within a location roughly 1.5 kilometers from Foundation Site 17, denoted AL908, and result in significant geological disturbance as DRO-1 manifests in an unknown subterranean location and attempts to breach the surface. All attempts have been forcibly aborted by constant aerial bombardment by Mobile Task Force Zeta-5. DRO-1 has demonstrated antimimetic characteristics which can only be offset by the specialized mimetic inoculation standard for the Foundation's internal antimimetic entity catalog, known as AMAC. These antimimetic characteristics have included, but are not limited to the following. Rendering any human or humanoid within the vicinity of its manifestation event incapable of perceiving it both, perceiving both it and the geological damage sustained by its manifestation. Rendering all personnel located at Site-17 incapable of perceiving it or the structural damage inflicted upon Site-17. Footnote. This excludes both personnel who have undergone specialized inoculation and Asset-1 DRO. Rendering any documentation of it or its anomalous effects both antimimetic and cognitohazardous. By bypassing DRO-1's antimimetic effects through either mnestic use or subconscious inoculation have resulted in the following. Condition. Viewing documentation of DRO-1. Result. Initiation of manifestation event. Viewer becomes a DRO-0355 instance. Footnote. A sentient mass of unidentified black material, anomaly summarized in the memetic dissemination process and you. Condition. Becoming cognizant of a manifestation event. Result. DRO-1 becomes aware of Site-17. Resistance to injury elevated substantially. Viewing DRO-1. Result. Unknown. In addition to its status as a large-scale aggressor, DRO-1 also possesses esophysical characteristics. Esophysical being, entities are capable of passi passively exerting an effect on baseline reality and are generally unobservable to their, due to their omnipresence and non-physicality. Uh, large-scale aggressor, DRO-1 also possesses esophysical characteristics which remain poorly understood. A subject of DRO-1's passive effect is included below Addendum 01-DRO-3. Addendum 01 Dro 1, Attached Correspondence, Initial Manifestation, Event. 2. Senior Researcher Dr. Alan Weathers. From Foundation Administrative and Logistical Director 058. Subject Transfer to Site 17. Dr. Weathers. It has been determined by the Overseer that an informational briefing regarding the circumstances of your transfer would better facilitate your role as Provisional Site Director. Be aware that the following information is confidential, and any unauthorized reproduction of it is an offense punishable by immediate expulsion from the Foundation and application of a Class C amnestic. You are being transferred to Site-17 due to a catastrophic containment failure which occurred several months ago. The instigating force of this failure was the introduction of a potent antimimetic entity, which resulted in personnel being unaware of the damage to both Site-17 and the containment chambers within the lower floors of the facility until several Keter-class entities breached containment. Due to this, proper lockdown procedures were not executed, and the facility sustained immense structural damage. Personnel sealed several hazardous entities within the lower floors, and subsequently evacuated, still not aware of the aforementioned antimimetic entity. During the initial recovery effort by Mobile Task Force Upsilon-1, codename Born from Flesh and Metal, the entity terminated all members of the task force except Asset-1 Dro, who remained partially aware of the entity throughout the exploration. After retreating from the compound, Asset-1 Dro engaged with the entity and demonstrated an unknown and potentially anomalous ability which succeeded in demanifesting Dro-1. 
Asset Dro 1 was amnesticized upon recovery and has remained on site as Dr. Tanya Schuyler and will be deployed if the entity reappears and threatens your facility. Measures to ensure that the future security of Site-17 are being discussed, and due to the large number of anomalous entities contained on site, it is unlikely operations will cease indefinitely. As Provisional Site Director, you have been tasked with ensuring the facility remains secure until proper measures are enacted. Any further communications and inquiries ought to be directed towards Minerva.AIC, my personal administrative and logistical AIC. Overwatch wishes you well in your new position. Signed, 058, Foundation Administrative and Logistical Director. Addendum 1, DRO 2. Excerpt, Intro to SO Physics, Intrinsics and How to Contain Them. Excerpt taken from page 38, detailing the author's initial impressions of the department during her first week of employment. More obvious than Preston's clear infatuation with me was that esophysics was really the study of nothing at all. It was a theory based on foggy historical accounts from cultures without the scientific literacy to understand the Earth's rotation. Unlike the Department of Extratemporal Studies or the Memetics Division, there were only a handful of anomalies officially considered under our jurisdiction, as was as was put in a department-wide meeting. It was no surprise to me that this meeting was attended by every esophysicist in the Foundation and amounted to only 20 people. I had transferred here because I had been told it was a step upwards in the strict Foundation hierarchy, and my faith in that statement was very quickly waning. I approached the leader of the department, one Dr. Genevieve, and asked how our department managed to stay afloat. Her response eradicated my obvious reservations. I could see her eyes slowly glaze as she took herself back to a time and place I was not privy to. In a bygone land, she said, I once saw a fissure torn through stone and ice, and between the two insurmountable cliffs I sensed a god. I knew that what I bore witness to, cloaked in a shadowy maelstrom of hate unfathomable, was the being which rides behind the heart of man, and one day may soon overtake us. She turned to me, her eyes both cruel and understanding. I contain things more powerful than gods, doctor. We are the first line of defense against the existential threats of time and death. That job is one that I will always cherish. Her words always resonated with me, even when I was again reminded of our limited supply of anomalous subjects. I know now why we are here. Because if there were no one willing to contain the threats under our care... We may all be lost. Addendum 0001, DRO 3. Emergency Code Phantasma Red in effect. DRO 1 manifestation event completed. Asset DRO 1 presumed terminated. Code Phantasma Red declared. On January 4th, 2010, a manifestation event was detected by on-site artificially intelligent conscript Galileo.AIC. Mobile Task Force Zeta-5 engaged with Class 8 Vanguard fighter jets and thaumaturgically enhanced Lucian-grade warheads. Engagement was ineffective. Secondary engagement tactic Hammer Down Protocol initiated. Secondary engagement ineffective. Asset 1 Dro's Class R Amnestic deactivated. Asset briefed by Site Director Alan Weathers. Asset deployed to engage Entity. Engagement unsuccessful. Fate of Asset undetermined. Presumed neutralized. Three hours since the initiation of the event, DRO-1 vocalized. Because the speech was presumably heard by all personnel at Site-17, the automated passive amnestization system entered Omega-9 operating procedures at this time. The vocalization was recorded by an on-site monitoring device. When the Earth first felt the grip of death, you knew of me. When your species first crawled from the mud and had the right sense to weep, you heard my voice. When a towering monolith was constructed to contain the encroaching army which rides over endless fields of ash and waste, you knew my name. I am Apollyon. I am a titan of chaos and death. You have attempted to contain me, and you have failed. You have attempted to combat me, and you have failed. You will attempt to destroy me, and you will fail. I am Apollyon, and I have no equal. 
Mobile Task Force Zeta-5 enacted Dying Breath Protocol as Dro-1 emerged completely onto the Earth's surface. Anomalous Location 908 was irradiated in the process. Surrounding land scorched. Site-17 experienced critical structural damage and entered appropriate lockdown procedures. Dro-1 was unaffected by Mobile Task Force Zeta-5's Dying Breath Protocol and began to exit Anomalous Location 908, demanifesting after leaving the area. Level 5 Classified Dro-1 Eyes Only Signature Key Accepted Esophysics is the study of beings giving great and terrible power over our universe. It is the study of embodiments. But what is embodied by a thing no one can know? A titanic, a titanic being, hidden from the eyes of even the most discerning doctors and researchers. The vocalizations heard by staff members at Site-17 were not the first time Dro-1 ever spoke. Mobile Task Force Zeta-5 reported hearing sounds emerging from the pit as they deployed their warheads. A single word, coming from the abyss, and pointed upwards in screaming rage. Dro-1 does not want to be known. It does not want desire to be understood, or to be studied, or to be looked over by the Foundation researchers residing safely behind bulletproof glass. It wants to be free. We have a discussion between Z5, Zeta-5 Valkyria and Psych Command. Command, coming in over the drop zone. Having trouble seeing the area itself. Setting warheads to self-guided. Understood. Report before deployment. External sensors indicate increasing turbulence. Jesus. Command, can you hear that? Negative. It's, it's saying something. It's saying something to me. Elaborate, Volcaria. Turbulence increases dramatically. Zeta-5 Volcaria struggles to regain control of the aircraft. Command, I'm setting external sensors to audio. Understood. External audio enabled. Captured audio transcribed. Foundation. 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 Foundation! Zeta-5 Valkyria deploys warheads. Feed disabled. Dro-01 is the anomalous. And the anomalous will be contained. Finn. Hey, there we go. That was a pass. <laughs> that was a ride. Goose on the couch yeah, says yeah. that was nice and creepy. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I have like a million questions, but while my brain gets together on what it wants to ask, let me pull up the chat to get to them. And also, what, Nagi? <laughs> How about we start with What? <laughs> I feel like you had a similar reaction to Dead Weight. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> oh, Goose would like to add the fuck to my what. Yes, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, so where yeah, do you want to start yeah. with us on this? Oh, excuse me? Where would you like to start with us on this? Uh, so, hear me out. I know it's dense. I know that there's a lot of stuff going on and probably some of the, the text that was hidden in that um, MDP sort of thing probably probably maybe elucidates a little bit of it. Um, so, 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 as I go back to the main page, that way I can, like, see the titles of everything and have, like, a summary to work off of. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Log. So... We have the landing page, explanation of what APAS is, uh, how it works, memes and what they do for you, how Site 17 doesn't know what's going on, and then the final explanation of what's essentially going on. Anti-memetic entity is death or the concept of the anomalous, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um... This was written after SCP-4260, which established what esophysics was, essentially. Um, so 4260 is death. This is sort of the platonic ideal or the embodiment of what the anomalous is, essentially. Um, and the sort of hidden implication in there is the fact that the Foundation has done so much to the anomalous as a whole 
that they've fundamentally altered what it is and how it reacts to the world. They've made it anti-memetic by hiding it from the rest of the world, like gating off knowledge. Um, and most importantly, they've they've made it hate the foundation. They made the anomalous as the whole as a whole just despise the foundation outright. Oh, the foundation manages to make a lot of things worse. Why not just this? <laughs> Oh God, uh, this, this article is the definition of, I barely know what's going on, but I know that I adored it. The Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Charm. As said in the <laughs> chat, uh, I think it was a 12 said it. No, it was Void maybe. Uh, the imagery in the tale is so crystal clear that... I felt like I understood everything that was happening, even though if I tried to summarize it, I would do a really bad job. I feel like yeah, it was took yeah, in I appreciate and it, man. Especially the uh, the dream sequences; those were those were difficult to write. I, I mean, it's it's terrible writing a dream sequence because, like, you have to consider that every single detail like might mean something to your readers, so you can't have anything that would be misconstrued or anything, and you also need to make it like lucid, so it's all just like together, you know. Um, so the sort of incoherence of the, the amnestics section of that was just fucked. <laughs> okay. So since I can't summarize this, if you had to tell someone what this was in three sentences, what would you, what would you say? Well, um, there's a lot of, there's, I'd say there's three main narrative threads here going on. So three sentences actually works. First of all, uh, embodiment to the anomalous manifests at Site 17 and is contained before eventually like escaping. And we don't know where it is, and we don't know where Tawny is either. Second thread, uh, Tawny Skyler enters the facility. Um, the rest of her team is killed. She somehow, in a way that the Foundation is not really aware of, manages to fix everything and then... Um, masquerades as a researcher essentially because of like they've they've messed with her head enough that she she thinks that she's a regular researcher but she keeps having these dreams in her head and she develops a romance with one of her co-workers and then eventually um disappears in the final manifestation and third more subtly the, the character that is like in universe accessing this terminal reading all these things uh maybe not maybe not literally but um it's it's dr weathers who is being promoted to an overseer after being brought in as a provisional site director um uh, after the first sort of carnage of the the event and then um, sort of taking over as like a regular site director and apparently doing a really good job. Um, yeah. Uh, if, if I were to attempt to elucidate whatever this is, then that would probably be the, the three things that I want to hit on. <laughs> and in the way that you pointed that out, what I realized is that I understood all of that. Like that didn't surprise mm -hmm. me, but I guess what, the, the feeling of confusion in my brain, and this isn't a bad thing, it's just what my brain is feeling, is that it feels like we came in and we got the middle chunk of the story, we got a little bit of info on the prequel, and then I am curious as hell is where Tanya went. I want to know what happened. Is, is, is there further to this story? <laughs> um, there's... On the wiki right now, there is an SCP about Natalie, Natalie Reams, a uh, uh, department member of the extratemporal, extratemporal department. Um, and she sort of spars off with the director that replaces uh, Weathers. His name is Graham, and he's a bad dude. Um, in terms of Skyler, though, uh, if you would mind directing yourself back to Offset 4, I believe, the one that explains the memetic dissemination process, uh, I'm pulling it up right now myself. Um, actually, I think it's offset three. I apologize. Anyways, um, yes, Dro uh, 0045, humanoid, incorporeal entity, wears a standard issue task force uniform, cannot interact with corporeal objects. You mouse over that and you see, Natalie, if you hear me, I'm fine, just like you said. I just need to hear your voice again. Are you there? Everything's so murky here. How did I end up like this? Can anyone hear me? Uh, so stay stay tuned on. I hate to do this, man, but I I, I got a draft in the works right now that I'm I'm really 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 excited about that I've been posting excerpts and stuff in the Discord, and I'm planning on posting that eventually. And it heavily involves Tanya, what happened to her, and what eventually how our story ends up concluding. 
Well, it sounds like we have a future stream plan. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe like two years in the future or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll probably still be doing this, so I'll be ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so on that same vein, while I am thinking about it, uh, okay, so we got that, the Tanya line, the story will continue in draft later. Uh, okay, so let's go to the standard question for a second, because where did this <laughs> I... Oh, wait, no! Sorry. I just remembered the one question I had about the story, which is the cons. The, the Dro one is the concept of the anomalous breaking loose from the surface mm -hmm. under site or near site 17. And, but if site 17 exists, doesn't that mean that the concept of the anomalous already existed or does it predate or did the anomalous concept was it brought into the existence by the foundation and then forgotten by the foundation after the fact? Okay. So, um, the whole lore behind esophysics is stupid. Honestly, like I, I, I created a bunch of rules for it and the, the implications that, that you can extrapolate off of that are fun to sort of think about. But the, the, the way it, it generally works is the idea is less the idea that like something exists and then an esophysical entity is created from that. It's more like that entity exists and because they exist and exist in the way that they do, then that thing exists in our reality. So most of the time, these astrophysical anomalies are completely unobservable. They're just spread out entirely, permeated throughout the universe, just don't interact with anything physical. Um, but they can occasionally, through outside stimuli or intentional meddling by the foundation, be brought into physicality, physically like densified and turned into a physical thing in in reality um it feels like the reverse of 3812 instead of our uh that's cactus's most powerful scp the right right that, the path the path of physical one yeah. yeah um and so it's kind of like the reverse of that instead of it ascending from our plane to the next level of so physical space we are actually capable of dragging them down to our level except uh, at least temporarily. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what they did in uh, 4260. They built a big-ass machine, and then they just, um, well, what actually happened was death manifested on Earth of its own accord, and then they built a big-ass machine to keep it manifested so it was trapped. Um, but here, again, you see the anomalous manifesting outside of Site-17 for whatever its own purposes are of its own accord and I'm with not, its own I'm not agenda. familiar with that um, article, uh, just as a pop of my head question, is that related to end of death in any way? Um, no, no, not really. Um, I, I went through this whole thing where I tried to get the end of death tag applied to 4260, but it, it doesn't belong there. Um, okay. It references an Omega K scenario, but it's it's not at all related. End of death has its own like whole story about an overseer trying to kill death and building a secret project and stuff. And the storylines don't cross different canons. Cool. So where did this story idea come from for you to write it? Well, it's been two years. Um, I, I can't tell you much about where the narrative came from. Um, a lot of these characters were invented whole cloth for this story um, and then continued later. Like um, Tanya's new, Apollyon's new, pretty much none of this was... Um, involved in like the, the three things or so that I, I wrote before, but emotionally, um, w where, where this was, was a, an attempt to elucidate a sense of confusion and sort of, um, fear, uh, I guess. Um, and I was feeling a lot of that at the time. So uh, like a lot of my works, it's an effort to, um, sort of, crystallize a particular emotional state and then examine what it is, uh, whether or not it's good, that, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of my stuff is very highly emotionally driven. And this one focuses very, especially on the confusion aspect of that. Cool. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. I love going over the critique process stuff because the people in the chat who want to write SCPs, but are not familiar with the process always need to hear it from us so they can learn it and do it themselves. So right, right. how many iterations did this go through of critique? 
Uh, were there any huge changes from start to finish? And what kind of changes did your critiquers end up making? Well, okay. Hi, hi Chad. I, I am staff on the SCP Wiki. I'm operational staff. Um, I'm on three teams. Mast, we do the random grunt work, essentially. Tech, we handle all the technical stuff. And forum crit. I'm the one to... I'm on the Butterfly Squad. I do forum crit all the time. I, I help people get their ideas off the ground and then get critique on the drafts. And all that to say, do as I say, not as I do. Because for like the majority of the first year and a half that I was writing for the wiki, I did not get any form of critique. Um, I wrote my first article and I got maybe one critter who like made some corrections on like typos and minor conceptual stuff. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And then I, I threw it up. I, I wrote it without the sort of normal green light process or putting it through ideas and stuff. And um, most of that holds true for a pass as well. This was largely one draft that I wrote over the course of maybe a month or so, but it was largely the same draft just building on top of itself um, with very little input from other people. Um, and for most people, that won't that won't produce much good. But um, I, I don't know something about this worked. Uh, I, I, I try to uh, credit my, my critters every time I, I post a thing. So let's see. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, no, I didn't get any crit on this according to my author post. Uh, uh -huh. If you check the discussion, I don't name anyone. So I, I suppose I just didn't get any. <laughs> That's it embarrassing. Is oh. Oh. That's not true. I got a uh, crit from one person in the draft and critique forum named Calamitous One. Shout out to Calamitous One. I haven't heard from you since, but I'm sure you do good work. Fantastic. And yes, chat, it's like riding a bike. You start riding and you get your critique and you get your training wheels. And the more you do it, the more faith you start to have. Like, I know the mechanics of this. I know where my foreshadowing is. I know where I'm laying my groundwork, my foundations, getting my details, all the spelling and grammar is correct to tell a good story. Uh, a lot of the people who have a gajillion articles now may not bother with critique on some pieces if they are certain that it is good, but you got to get to that point. <laughs> even then, it is fairly abnormal for even like extremely prolific authors to not get any sort of critique. Like, um, it, you you see people saying that they cold post and stuff, but I think that I think that's kind of fallen out of the fashion recently. Ever since, um, I mean, ever since Nat left the wiki, um, honestly. Um, but getting critique is very sort of like a, a normal part of actually posting an article, especially for for new people. Um, so if you can go through the sort of idea uh, critique phases, we, we'd love to help you get your your concepts right, so you don't make sort of big mistakes that you need to do a lot of work to correct later in the future. Um, use the IRC chat rooms. Uh, the Critters is always open. And, uh, you know, uh, just be normal, not like me. <laughs> I have I have cold posted one article in my day successfully and two that completely bombed. Uh, so <laughs> the odds are not in your favor that way. And yeah, more importantly yeah. than that, even just from like the right, not the writing tips angle, Sometimes other people are going to give you ideas that completely change your story in a way that you never would have seen if you didn't have some advice. There are so many things that can improve your story if you just get another perspective on it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I mean, there's a reason we call it the Wiki Collaborative. It's not just because we're building on each other's work. It's because each work is itself a sort of patchwork of different people's, like, um, influences and input and um, help in a lot of different respects. Coolio, I think we're reaching the end of the list. Is there any topic about today, about this article that you did not get to talk about that you want to before we start wrap up? No, no, I, uh, I think this article's, it's one thing I do want to mention. This is, a little bit of a tech tip from me to you. I did the technically illiterate thing, but now I'm on the tech team. So you know that I've, I've reformed my ways. Um, so the gimmick of this article is largely that it uses what's called a, a list pages module, which is an abuse of a wiki dot feature to have like multiple quote unquote pages stored on the same page. So you can have like multiple pages, but have the same reading module is essentially the idea. Um, 
And if you ever decide to write an article that uses that, my advice to you is keep the pages at an absolute minimum. We had five pages in the reading today. It used to be seven. It used to have like you were at a landing page and then you went to a separate page where it showed you the little like what's online, what's not applicable, what's stopped. That was its own separate page. And then you went to a secondary page that explained what APAS was. Uh, it was just a very not um, a very unpleasant experience for the reader. And I'm surprised it got the rating that it did because that was a fix that I did recently. Uh, I decreased the number of pages and stuff. So just make, just put yourself less in the shoes of an author and more of a person who is reading your article. Fi try to figure out like, um, would this be comfortable to read? Would this be accessible to read and stuff like that? Uh, there are many things that you can do with your writing on the site that will like automatically just tax your reader to the point where they just won't bother with your article. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the extra pages may not have been that barrier. Sometimes people will have a nice buy-in for that. But as mm -hmm. an example, when I am reading articles for the channel, I so far tend to favor shorter articles just because I don't have a lot of time. Uh, yeah, now yeah, that we've yeah. gotten far enough ahead, I can start uh, doing longer articles for the channel, which is a blast. But the reason I bring this up is that when I would go into an article and see that it's a million miles long, mm -hmm. I would go, okay, well, I don't have to check that for the channel because I'm not going to do that today. Whereas if I see a bunch of collapsibles, then, or if you see like a top and you're like, oh, this is short. And then you see all the collapsibles, you're like, oh, it's not short. Then it depends on what impression you want your reader to get. If you want them to know going in, this is a long wall of text. They're, they might get a little scared off. If you hit them with, I've got these collapsibles, here's my chunks, here's my chapters, they might stick around for a little longer. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you say you're doing longer articles on the channel now, huh? Thanks to, our, thanks to our good buddy Charles, who is editing my audio now. Thank you, Charles. Shout out to our buddy yeah. Chuck. Thank you, Charles. Uh, sure. Would you like to read my my 12K word SCP article with about 15 collapsibles on your channel? Would you like to read SCP-4051? Would you like to Would you like to read about the little portal boy? Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> It'll be a blast. <laughs> no, but throw it in the yeah, you throw it in that. the channel because now it's an, uh, it's an I just did. Long it was, uh, I think it was a Twall suggested a 3999 tale called I Stared Into the Face of Everything and Nothing and Made It Out Alive. Yeah. And that isn't a particularly long reading, but it is longer than most of the ones I would normally pick because now I have time. It is mm -hmm. rather emotional and required many takes. And the raw audio for that reading was an hour and 50 minutes. <laughs> I can't wait to see what that edits <laughs> down to, but that was a lot of booth time. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I mean, you did do the, uh, how, how long was the 3999 itself? That was... 3999 huge. was 50 minutes. And as a voice acting, just like kind of rule of thumb, whatever your raw audio is, you expect on average the finished project to be a third of that length and you expect the editing time to be three times the length of the raw. So if my <laughs> 3999 reading was 55 minutes, about an hour, then that likely means I was an average in the booth about three hours, uh, likely four because back then I was a much more beginner. And then the editing time was likely something like 12 to 15 hours. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it was even worse because back then I wasn't smart enough to use headphones while I was editing. So I would literally have to download the audio and upload it to YouTube to see how it sounded in a private video. And oh. then if it was good, leave it. And if it was bad, take it down and re-edit it. <laughs> so... Don't do as I did. I'm so much better now. Ah. <laughs> yeah, no, we're we're both reformed. <laughs> we can learn. 
Whew, all right. With that, I guess I'll ask my last question, which is, do you have any reading suggestions for the chat? Give us one of your favorite articles that is not yours and give us another one of your articles they should check out. Yeah, yeah. We um, we talked about this before last stream. So I, I, I'm actually organized this time. And I have a little personal sandbox that I call the Crab Den. It's very chill. One of the pages I have there is a recommended list. So this is a big sort of thing of every article that I've read that I've like super really like vibed with and enjoyed a lot. Um, I'm going to post that link in the chat right now because we did that last time. Let's see if that goes through. Nope, that pings me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, the one that I want to highlight from that list in particular is a GUI format for the Serpent's Hand. Well, a, um, a, a splinter group of the Serpent's Hand called Scatter Somnia. It was a, um, an entry in the JamCon contest that happened back in 2020. Uh, it was written by Flops, really fantastic author. Um, how I would describe it, I'll also post that in chat. How I would describe it is... Um, it's very, it's very whimsical. Uh, it takes place in the Broken Masquerade, I believe. Yeah, it's parodied to the Broken Masquerade hub, and it's about, well, it's it, it's about a lot of things. But um, the the thing that I took most from it was, what if normalcy was pulled back? What if we all knew about the anomalous, and we were still not happy? Nothing was better. And there's something profoundly sad and evocative about that idea that I just, I really enjoy. Flops did fantastic on it. I think it was written like 24 hours or something. Really, really fantastic. Anyways, posting that link in the chat now. And yeah, that's my recommendation. Yeah, based on that summary, yeah, you have sold me. I am very interested. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Do you have another one of yours that you want them to go chase down? Uh, read SCP-4051. It's either the best thing I've ever written. It's 20K words or maybe 10K. I don't know. Um, it's got lots of characterization and pathos and conflict and all that. <laughs> and have a nice night, y'all. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I will see you in the Discord server, friend. Oh, Thank yeah. Uh, shout out to Hatsune Miku. I'm not sure if you can see this on my uh, cam, but... <laughs> Hatsune Miku decked out. <laughs> okay, see you, Sherm. See ya, Nagi. See you later. Window down. And for all of y'all in the chat, thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Hold on, my teleprompter is gone. I can't see anything. Welcome to my chest. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed the reading. Thank Nagi especially for coming on and sharing that awesome article as well as other ones you can go check out. If you like the show, make sure to share, subscribe, all that YouTube business. And if you really want to help us out, go check out the new Patreon tier rewards and maybe sign up to help support us make the crazy things we want to do because SCP Indie Films and Indie Games, I want to produce them. Uh, I got the idea this week that we should do SCP Haunted Houses like Halloween, like Hollow Scream. And SCP Escape Rooms. And I used to work in haunted houses at Bush Gardens in Tampa. I may know some people, know some people who at least could give me advice. So I'm excited about the idea. I'm not sure I can pull it off, but I got my fingers crossed. I'm going to put in the effort. In the meantime, hope you guys had fun. And I will see you in the next video. And if she does it like this, will you do it like that? And if she... I know I always pick songs I forget the words to. And if she touches like this, will you touch her like that? Will you touch her right back? Thank you, Goose, for the proper lyrics. What are the rest of the lyrics? Help me out here. I don't know them, but I'm still trying to sign off. Help me. And if she moves like this, will you move it like that? Come on, shake, 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 shake it and sing.